Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. So I um, spoke a little while ago about maybe showing you the workbench I use. Nothing particularly interesting in that. So I thought I'd do this in two segments. Look at the workbench broadly and then why I came up with the design. So um, straight away, you can maybe see that that's a little bit unusual. But because I have no storage space up above I needed to have my tool chest to wheel underneath so the whole design was set really from making sure the corner of my tool chest could clear the leg of the bench and it is a tight squeeze and that was really for me the dimension that was important when I did this it was between there and then there, just being able to slide that tool chest in and out. And then I can push the tool chest behind me, work from it and kind of carry on. Ideally, I would have like a nice cabinet somewhere else where everything's up at a nice height, but you know, you don't always have the solution that you need. So in construction terms, this bench is maybe a little bit different than most that you would see. Um, as you can see, it hasn't got that stretcher in the front, but that doesn't really cause any problems. You see there in the back, what I did was kind of double up and make something a lot, lot bigger. That one's probably, I think it's like a nine by two and a half or a nine by three. And that's joining those back legs in. These front legs here, these are, if I just get you out of the tripod, these are leg frames that are made with three mortars and tenons, which you can see are wedged. So you've got a really strong frame. You might notice in behind here how badly split that is. And I put that onto the back for a reason because it's a bit grim. But these legs are actually a lamination. They are, you can't really see the join, but they're made from, from bearers. So when you get deliveries of timber, you, um, get usually two, maybe three or three, something like that. So I edge joined those together. So I ended up with some six by threes for the legs. Um, and again, I used some carcassing material there. Then at the top, there's a rail coming through. I had to chop out a bit where I put a quick release vise on the end and chucked a bit of bracing under that just to reinforce it at this end. It was no problem. I could just let that run straight across. Now the bench top, don't know that many other people would go for this but um, the reason I came up with a design for doing it like this was um, just materials I had to hand. What it's made of is, I can't really see underneath because I painted it black, but it's two fire door blanks or offcuts of fire door blanks. You can buy the material in sort of like eight before sheets and then internally it's, um, it's like a big heavy duty plywood. It's not the ones where you get that kind of chipboard core. Um, it's kind of like three layers of like, um, must be like 11 mil staves running across each other with a plywood facing. So they were just off cuts. I used a full size piece to do the underside and I cut it the same width as one of those kind of butcher block type worktops that you can buy. That's just one I bought off of eBay. Um, the inspiration for that was really just seeing how they do engineered flooring and by engineered flooring I mean the kind of type which you can get kind of a plywood base with just a wear layer on top of quite often oak or something of that nature and I thought well maybe if I make something like that but on steroids maybe that would work. So then it was just a case of adding PVA and screws to just laminate those two together and some clamps and calls and all that kind of stuff. Then I took the screws out and then same thing with the top. Um, but before I put the top on, I put on like a, a lipping. So the lipping was some big bits of sapili that um, were running around the edges on the ends because I had some off cuts. And they're screwed and plugged into the end of the fire door blank. And then on the underside there, I used some slightly thinner pieces of beach off cut that I had. And I just dovetailed them in and put some contrasting plugs in. Don't really need to do that but um you know and then 
top was clamped on with just a bucket load of PVA and just some sprinkles. So that's just like a, a piece of wood with a, a bow on it clamped down and just went to town on that. So just made like a, like a big shop lamination and just gave that plenty of time to, to do what it needed to. And it's really behaved itself. Um, it could maybe do with a flatten, but I'm the kind of person who just gets on with it until such time I think it might need attention. And at this time it doesn't, so long may it stay that way. Um, quick release vice on, mainly because I really like that style of vice. They act quickly, isn't their name? Very, very good quality. Pull it out, nice big capacity. Pull the trigger, back in you go. So that's really nice. That's a that's a Woden, and people will discuss whether a vice should be mounted flush or projecting out like this one is. Had got a great passage in a book from the 30s, I think, and it's been one of those contentious things. Even then, some people will want them projecting, some people not. I had mine projecting because it was just easier for me to fit it that way, and because I want to protect my tools. I made a substantial chock that goes all the way around it. Um, that keeps things protected. On the inside, I've got some of this like automotive gasket material. You can buy sheets of it where you can make custom gaskets. Um, it's available in lots of thicknesses. And I tried some different thicknesses at work. That's quite thin. And I would say it's probably too thin. I've tried with the thicker stuff. And although you'd think the thicker stuff it's got given it, it's actually quite good because it what really grips onto the timber. Um, I've never really worked with a tail vise before. I thought the most straightforward way of fitting that would be just sticking a quick release on the end of which I've done. It's pretty straightforward. There's a tail vise, quick release action if you need it. Um, which meant I had to put a row of dogs in, which I've never done before. And I'm gonna have made one for each hole. Again, it's not something I've used or got in the habit of using, um, but they're there and they don't take too long to fit. But I think if I had to do it again, I would probably just not fit them and then maybe add it when I did need to. But you know, sometimes you get caught up doing these things. Um, yeah, and then this is really useful down here, a planing stop. This guy on the forum a good few years ago made one of these kind of raw affairs and there's a, a block in underneath there. You knock it up for where you want it. And then you shove your wood into the end of that. Bites on it really well. And you can do the planing up that you need to. Um, and then what I did is created a little recess below. So then when you need to, you can just knock it below the surface. So if you're moving things over the surface of your bench, there's no chance of getting your, your material caught on it. Um, the worst thing I did on this one was fit some kind of wheels on it. Um, the problem was is that they, they work on a cam action where you kind of, you lift up and it boosts the bench up, but you had to move that down so low to get that cam action to work, to get the wheel to actually lift. And unless you're, the floor is absolutely perfect where you are and you can kind of see I'm not perfect, I've got a wedge there it's hard up in other areas, they were kind of pointless. Um, so for me, I, I definitely wouldn't bother with those again. There might be better quality ones out there. I might have just got stung with some crappy ones. Um, it's completely possible. And yeah, then I think onto the other bit, which is why do it this way? And for me, that's like, well, when I go around looking at jobs and I see other people's workshops or when I ref think about what was maybe at college when I was there and all different kind of affairs really you see a lot of stuff today and I think it's kind of understandable because you need a lot of people are going to need ingredients lists to follow a recipe of sorts so you get that thing where there's a bit of copy and paste and you think oh I've got to do it like that or I must have it like this nearly every bench I've seen in the wild that was made by just say a joiner a carpenter a furniture maker they all just vary a little bit um you know, I, I went for a thick top, mainly because I had the materials to hand. That may not be the best solution for you. Um, 
I said it, if, if I had to buy the fire door blanks and I had to specifically buy the lower leg framework and all the rest of it, I may not think much, but again, for, for me, expenditure was the top, vice and a vice, the wheels, which I deeply regret, but a nine by three for the back. And then the rest of it was scraps. If you're starting out, you're not gonna have those scraps to hand and maybe cutting fire door blanks to size would be hard work. So for me, it wasn't, I, I work in a workshop where I've got that kind of equipment. I think certainly if you're beginning and you wanna make a bench, I think the, what's come to be known as like the British joiners bench style is probably one of your best options because it's so simple. Um, and there's loads of variations of those out there. I mean, you've got the archetypes that people have now imprinted on us because it's their particular style and they extol the virtues of them. But everyone I've seen varies. I've worked at one before when I was an apprentice, the college had them. So I worked off of one of those on and off for three years and they're fine, you know, cheap and simple to make. But yeah, I, I don't really have any regrets making it. The, again, the perfect thing for me, the most central thing was have a tool chest that I could slide underneath. And that's what it was designed around. It's about six feet long. I think something like that. And it's about 36 inches high, which for me is about right, but I might drop it a little more. Um, I've, I hate to show you this end of the garage. We're just having a good clear out for maybe a car boot sale, but I picked up a cheap bandsaw a little while ago and the working height of the bandsaw at work is about 34 inches. So I'm thinking about maybe dropping this one and maybe having the feed table of that one maybe the same as the bench. So if I want to resource something, I can use this as an outfeed table, but I might be doing the classic thing of thinking too much. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, if you've got any questions, comments or whatever, feel free to ask away or, you know, and I, I think the advice I would give is like, don't procrastinate too much if you want to build yourself a bench. Um, the tip I would see from most kind of old benches I see is they just knocked up something from whatever was hanging about. And that's kind of what I did here. It was, I had to buy very little. I already had some black paint because there was like a mix of poplar and pine, I think for the bearers. So it looked a bit of a mess. Yes, that back leg through there is split, but it's fine. It's holding up. I haven't got a problem with it. And if I was worried about it, I'd probably put some big bolts through there or something like that. You know, it's doing its job. Um, yeah, and a good vice, these quick release vices. I don't think they are the vice du jour these days. Everyone seems to like a leg vice, but you know, whatever. If you want to use a leg vice, use one. Um, but just knock something up. It don't have to look like the perfect kind of vice from history. Oh, I'm sorry, the perfect bench from history. As long as they're sturdy, they don't do a dance all over the floor when you try and use them and they don't bounce. They've got a nice kind of solid kind of thump when you hit them nothing's bouncing back at you um pretty much good to go um but that's not to say i don't think swanky benches are cool i think um there's a fellow called frank straza who makes them um, probably some of the most lovely benches i've seen they're just stunning and i think you know for a lot of people i think it looks like he's maybe made a few for people who have retired or their gifts for people and they look like a million dollars they look fantastic and i think it's nice to have them out there but in my situation i couldn't justify the time to make it but i'm glad people are because it is certainly pretty inspirational to look at that stuff so so yeah i hope you enjoyed that quick tour i right, said so any questions any feedback anything you think i've done stupid then um feel free to ask all right see you soon